Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, I'm playing the Tier 9 Pan-European Estegetland. This is a destroyer that I think is crazy good fun to play. Okay, a little bit about the ship. Well, as you can see on the mini-map there, the, uh, the torpedo range is a little bit better than the gun range. The torpedoes can get out to 12 kilometers, the guns, at least as configured, have a, a range of 10.2 kilometers. On this particular map, I generally try to avoid going to the island that you can see on kind of the left side of your screen there. I know a lot of people like to head for that little gap, uh, or little, I guess, convergence of island and cap circle. But so often, I'm just telling the team there what's going on with my RPF. Uh, so often, the no DDs will just torp that area as soon as their torpedoes come up, they just throw torpedoes there in anticipation, for particularly of radar cruisers sitting right there. Now I can see I've got Druid headed this way. If you look on the mini-map, you'll see the Druid. And that is a straight-up gnarly gunboat of a destroyer. So I'm feeling pretty good about having a little bit of help here. Of course, <laughs> This game being what it is, despite the fact that the nose of the, the druid is pointed this way and he's steaming this direction, nothing says he won't stop. So I don't want to commit too early or too much here. Now, what you're seeing there as far as the torpedo lead indicator, that's the widespread on these uh, pan-European destroyers. And I'm just telling the team, hey, we got we got somebody over that direction. Now, looking at the lineup, it could be Summers, Shimakaza, Holland, or Z46. If it's Z46, I have to avoid getting too close. If I nose into the Z46 and the Z46 uh, uses hydro, and there he is. You know, he can smoke up, keep me in his hydro for a little while while, while his friends blap me. And that Zhao, in particular, is a huge threat. It's fairly accurate at the 14 or so kilometers that we're seeing right now. And that HE hits very, very hard against a destroyer. Now, you, you can see that Estegetland does have the ability to heal some damage particularly against HE, but uh, still, I don't want to don't want to overcommit and get myself in a situation where I get flapped early. Now, you can see what I was talking about before. You've got the Grossa, Riga, Druid, Iowa, kind of all in that zone that I was talking about. Now, Z46 is headed this way. I just have to fall back. You can see I'm already turning. I'm just going to do what damage I can. I'm going to hope he'll smoke up, because if he does, he'll break line of sight. And that's what I was talking about with Zhao. I just lost uh, a little over half my HP in one volley to the, to the Zhao. And I'll just fall back. Just kind of counting on the Z46 smoking up to avoid taking damage. Now, I can, I can heal some damage. I mean, you can see that... You know, another minute and 11 seconds, I'll be able to heal up again, and then I'll be back to, what, three quarters of my original HP. And we've kind of identified where all the bad guys are on this side. Meanwhile, our gearing was able to secure the Bravo cap, despite the fact that there was a Holland and a Shimakaza there. Good on him. Arte Grossa is there, kind of helping to hold that area. Hopefully he won't push in and get himself torpedoed to death. And on the far side... The bad guys are about to take Charlie. Our guys on that side are kind of falling back. You can see we've got a couple of guys on the nine line, which uh, 
is, is a questionable tactic on this map, at least in my opinion. And I'm able to land a torpedo, just kind of throwing them back out there. My hope is that I hit the Z-46. And that he's only got a handful of hit points left, but more than likely he hit somebody else. Um, okay, so, uh, pulling the focus back from the, the larger picture. Oh, there are two De Grosses now at Bravo. Lots of targets for torpedoes, and you know that there is a red DD in the Bravo cap now as the circle is starting to turn. Now the JB, he's been reversing. I'm going to count on him continuing to do that. I'm going to count on him also continuing to stay kind of angled against the Riga and the Iowa. Now look at the minimap, and our Riga sitting there kind of between the 3 and 4 line at uh, Delta. He's just kind of flat broadside to all of those guys. Now that doesn't doesn't mean he will get blast. It just means that it's possible. You can see now he's he's angled away, and I'm able to land a few more torpedoes, almost five. But I'll take the four hits on the JB for sure, and I'm just kind of inching my way toward the bad guys. You can see that I, I, I'm reversing toward them. And the reason for that is that that Z-46 comes back. I do not want to get sunk. I want to be able to accelerate away. And that's uh, the best defense I have against incoming shells. If I'm, if I'm nose in, I think JB's probably going to start heading more south than he is. He might swing the nose around the other way, but either way, I'll land, I think, at least one if he's still there when the torpedoes get there. So now I know I don't have to worry about the Z-46. And I've just told my Iowa and Druid, okay, he's gone. Maybe he comes back. Maybe he decides that Ariga and a couple of De Grossa are just reason to run south. JB's probably going to be gone before the torps get there, but hope springs eternal. It's a maybe. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so the game is, uh, what, seven minutes and almost a half into into the uh, total possible 20 minutes. And I've, I've racked up a decent but not, not astounding 40k damage. Uh on the back of six torpedo hits. And now it's time to try and secure the cap. Druid had the same idea and between the two of us we'll have this thing wrapped up in no time. You can see my radio location indicator or radio position finder depending upon how long you've been in the game. And it's telling me that somewhere in this direction is the nearest target, and that's almost certainly a destroyer. Can't be the Z-46. I'm I'm getting I'm guessing it's the Holland. I could probably eat one Holland torpedo, but I I don't want to eat more than that. And they are so fast that especially when you're running at them at 35 knots. You don't have much time to maneuver. Oh, looks like whatever, whatever is out here, the torpedoes were thrown and looked to me like they were be, being thrown at the Iowa. All right, so big picture. We've got two caps. Bad guys have one, but the bad guys have a 32 point lead, roughly, as it stands right now, and that's. Uh, that's because they've sunk two battleships, a cruiser and a destroyer. We've only sunk one battleship and two destroyers. But I think that's about to change. The Jean Bar looks like he's in big trouble. Eddie's got, well, this entire flank shooting. And down he goes. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about the game. Both teams are down four ships. But in terms of positioning, I like our positioning much better. I think we're pretty well set up to be able to defend, to defend the Bravo cap. 
a large portion of the bad guy team is back there on the 8 and 9 line chasing after Oscar and Petro. That's Summers. Uh, he can definitely do some damage, but I think, you know, and our, our poor gearing, <laughs> he, he just didn't have torps ready and looked like he was just, okay, I'll run through this gap and get ahead of the Palmer and the Grossa and Iowa out there. And um, just got caught. Summers came around the corner, had his torps ready. Now, does it stink that we lost the gearing? Absolutely. But at the same time, it's kind of good that we lost the gearing in the sense that Summer had to use his torpedoes to take out a gearing when he could have taken out a DeGrosso or a Riga or maybe even both. And now we know where the Summers is. You can see I've got torpedoes on the way out there. I don't think they're going to be quite fast enough to get to him unless he stops. He's currently radar and I'm sure that's what's going on. I got the Riga's lighting him up in his smoke. Both teams down five ships. And I have to be careful here myself. You can see the, D the DM, the Dmitry Donskoy. If he should radar, there's nowhere for me to go. And I've just told them where, the, where I'm at. <laughs> but part of the reason I did it at that point was I was running away. And was nearly at my gun range, which means I was going to go dark. But I did tell the Donskoy I was here, so he went ahead and used his radar. But he's moving away as well, so only got off one volley before his radar was too far away to do him any good. All right, we are now down to five ships. Bad guys still have six. We have a lead. Uh, I would say more than more than anything at this point, we just have to focus on one ship at a time, make that our priority, and just chew each down in their turn. We've got a little while before the Iowa, etc. get to the you know, the six line, or five line, where they can start to put guns on Bravo. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the current situation, and I'm saying to myself, okay, my job is to harass these guys down here and keep them far enough away that they're not as big a threat and also to give them a reason to angle this way against torpedoes so that they have to choose between showing me broadside and you can see Zhao pushed this way just enough and I pushed that way just enough to get spotted for a second where they have to choose between showing me broadside which is going to, as you'll see, hurt or showing my teammates in Bravo broadside. And that's why I'm running south. I'm just, I see it so often, and you probably do too. Teams will bunch up, they'll all sit in one square, and then the bad guys, they angle against one of the ships in that square, and they're angled against every single one of them. So I've run south a little bit to create the possibility of some angles. Now I don't want to run south anymore. I mean, I, I would love to run south farther and get even better angles. But I have to keep in mind that the Donskoy has radar. It's not going to be too much longer till it's back up. So I'm going to run back this direction just so I have a little bit more assistance. If and when that radar pops and he starts lobbing shells my way. So, you know, it's coming. So we've got a couple of battleships that are going to be pushing into Bravo. I don't think that Iowa's going to last too much longer. But stranger things have happened. So there's a Palmer, De Grossa, Goliath out there, although he doesn't have much in the way of HP. Donskoy. Looks like I might land one or two here on the Donskoy. Still, there's one on the Donskoy. Thought I might catch the Goliath, but he narrowly avoids the torpedoes. But I managed to push the Donskoy back with the torpedoes. So even if he does radar right now, it won't light me up. So 
adjustment, I think I have to shift my attention this way. 16 seconds, torps will be back up. You can see all says up there, still uh, trying to get back in the game. I did at one point, you know, ping the map, just kind of hoping to get him to turn and, and engage. But, uh, you know, he, he finally has, and his HP is going to come in very handy as these two battleships push into Bravo. Iowa, meanwhile, has run around the corner. He's, I think, trying to get the guns on these cruisers, help finish them off. And I'm thinking I can probably handle this right here myself. Yeah. Handle this myself. There we go. Took a little longer than I hoped. And while I was doing that, I did land a significant number of torpedoes there to help finish off a battleship at the Bravo Cap. And we have turned the tables and this is about to be over so uh, i love playing this ship to me it's every bit as fun as holland uh, if you haven't run through this land i really encourage it if you like destroyers they're very fun thanks very much for joining me i really appreciate it if you haven't already please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time